So this talk is about MKSI initRD, which is an alternative way to build initRDs. And the official title had in Fedora, but the Fedora part kind of shrunk over time. So you know, it's like MKSI initRD and a, a bit of mention of Fedora at the end. And um, so let me start with a justification. And this justification will just reuse um, refer to the talks on Friday. So, so there we, we, we had some excellent talks about uh, continuational VMs. And uh, continuational VMs can be summarized as you are not allowed to run any code which, is, uh, which not has, has not been signed and verified to be uh, the, the right thing delivered by the vendor or the owner of the machine, whatever. So, we need to, to have everything immutable and signed and, and, and uh, checked. So if we, uh, and, and this is certainly the case for continuous VMs, but it's also the case for other things. Like for example, you have a device somewhere on the edge and you just want it to do the thing that it's supposed to do. And if somebody comes in and swaps the disk, uh, this shouldn't allow them to do anything with the device. Uh, so if we start at this point and say that we, we have to run signed con only and go back from there, well, this uh, currently we have only one way to deliver uh, uh, kernels that, uh, that are checked, uh, right? Uh, it's to, to create a unified kernel image which combines the, the kernel and the interd and the, the whole thing is signed together. Um, well, okay, it's, it's not, not done anyway. Uh, that's not true, but it's, I think, I would say the best way. And uh, so if we are supposed to sign the, the interd, it must be built by the distro, the, the, mm, uh, because we need to build it first before we can sign it, and the, the keys are somewhere uh, in, a, in a vault somewhere. Uh, so local modifications are not possible. They are not just not, not, not useful in this model. Uh, so, the current system uh, that we have that, is, that has been built around local modifications uh, and doing things at the end machine, it doesn't, uh, cannot be used anymore. Uh, and uh, so, let's say that we design the system from scratch. What we would do, instead of this fairly complicated thing that we have right now, is uh, mm, well, do things in a, mm, the, the simplest way possible. And, and this means that we take upstream packages, I mean distro packages, uh, which already have our software in a form that is ready to be, to be deployed anywhere, and just build an init RD out of this. And this is what MKSI init RD is. Uh, so, Martin, you have questions? Because I, I, if anyone has questions, then please raise a hand. Uh, it's, I think it's, if I'm talking nonsense, then it's better to clear it up uh, during the presentation. Um, so, right, we, we have, uh, on, in Fedora and RHEL, we have Dracut, but other distros have similar systems that take files from the host FS, uh, use some, or do some magic to resolve what dependencies should be installed. So. LDD on binaries and maybe some special hacks to figure out things. So essentially, people build, when you are building an ERD, you are redoing the work that was done by packagers previously, just in a more hacky way. Uh, so it's like, a, I mean, essentially a duplication of at the packaging layer. You have a dependency mechanism and conditionals and, and, and a lot of that, of that stuff. Uh, and of course, this takes time. Uh, on each end machine. Uh, so this is, this is what happens before, I mean, while we are building the initRD and before we install it. And after we have installed it, uh, the initRD is, is very special. It, it has, so we, with Dracut we have an init queue uh, and we have special code. So for example, in Dracut we have bash code that generates bash code that generates bash code. Mm. And so uh, now things are complicated, different than in the host system. And it's when, when if you want to debug things, you need to know both the thing you are debugging and the initRD, and uh, it's just complexity. The, the, uh, the, the environment is set up in a slightly different way. 
Uh, and what I want to underline is that not, not everybody is aware that um, our initRDs use systemd in the initRD. So we, we start systemd in the, in the initRD. It uh, sets up the whole system in the way that it likes it to be set up. So all the slash proc, slash sys, slash dev is mounted in exactly the same way as on a real system. Uh, and it starts services in the same way and so on. The difference is that the uh, root of the file system is a temporary file system instead of a real file system. But the logic and, and the, the API is the same. But we add to this and we, we have, so we have the system D queue for jobs and we also have the Dracut queue for jobs and they kind of interact and play with one another in some, some semi-defined way. Uh, and yeah, another issue that I find with this system is that every distro does a different thing. So uh, the alternative approach is to say, well, let's do less. Let's build uh, images from distro packages uh, and um, MKSI w w it was a, was a kind, kind, of, kind of a script, a wrapper around package managers that, w that was initially written to test system D, and it builds images, but it's actually fairly uh, convenient to, to build uh, um, interd archives with, with it, uh, because it has like support for different package managers and conditional conditionalization uh, and stuff like that. Uh, but MKSI is not the important part. I mean, we could replace it with a different system and uh, it would probably work quite as well. Um, but anyway, so MKSI builds uh, its images from distro packages, so it's kind of a, like a fancy wrapper around uh, change root and uh, DNF. Uh, and for the last uh, upcoming, well, for, for the upcoming MKSI release, we have done a lot of work. Um, so, uh, repart has been written to uh, write stuff directly to a file without using a loopback device, uh, which allows for unprivileged operation, um, uh, which is very nice if you are building uh, images as a, as a normal user or you're building images in a container because you don't need root privileges. Uh, it has been converted to use DNF5. Uh, a lot of work has been done like on the uh, way that the uh, configuration files work. Now you can do profiles and uh, conditional logic based on matching. So for example, you can have a shared config as one file and a subset that is specific to each distro as a separate file with a match section and then you end up like, with, a, with a limited amount of duplication. So uh, all those things, they're part of MKSI 15, which, is, uh, which will be released as soon as Dan says it should be released, so uh, maybe next week. Mm. And uh, so we, we have MKSI and now I can say what MKSI in RD is, right? It's just a few config files. So, so it's, it's the main thing is uh, a, a 20 line file that lists packages that should be installed in the interd. Um, and uh, this is, um, well, okay, so, so what are the benefits? So this is a really, really minimal system, right? We, we, uh, we MKSI itself is not, well, it's kind of complicated, but it's essentially a wrap around DNF. So, so m the heavy work is done by, uh, by, by packages. And we use the package dependency resolution mechanism to figure out everything that should be installed. This means that our packages have to be packaged well, but we do that work anyway, so that's, that's okay. Uh, right, and we, are, we, we let the existing tools handle 98% of the work. Uh, we are independent of the host. So I want to build an MKSI image for Debian or for Gentoo or Arch on my Fedora system. This works without any problem and the other way. So uh, um, I mean, this is, uh, this is not, not just a question of not being, uh, I mean, it's kind of ugly to pull files from the 
the file system because they have, might have been modified locally or something might be off. But it's also important for stuff like um, build reproducibility, right? If you are supposed to sign something, you, if you take it from packages, you know that the package manager will verify the hash of which file, of which file is, it is installed. Uh, and if you repeat the installation, the, you, uh, you expect bit for bit uh, identical result. Uh, so there's much less variation. Mm. Yeah, the images can be reproducible uh, and, well, Fortunately or unfortunately, uh, everyone gets the same image, which, which, which is a problem I'll talk about later. Uh, and it makes sense to sign them. Uh, and we re reuse system D, right? We get rid of this, those additional uh, helpers, bash stuff in the inter D. System D does the setup. Uh, and um, the execution environment uh, in the inter D is exactly the same, well, not exactly, but it's very similar to the host environment, right? You open a, a shell into the inter-D, and you, it's like debugging a normal system. Uh, the, 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 the root file system is different. Mm. And also, I don't know, like you want to install SSHD into the inter-D, you specify an addition, additional package on the list of packages to install, and uh, SSHD pulls in the dependencies, uh, and uh, you don't really need to do anything else because the packaging has already been done in this way that you can pull SSHD into any system and, uh, and it gets started as part of the normal uh, um, systemd transaction. Yes? So, uh, I mean, I mean uh, uh, reproducible in the sense that if we take the exact same of RPMs and install it, we, we expect the same result. Because we install them in a fixed order, and uh, it's, it's a bit hand-wavy because it's possible that it doesn't actually work. Uh, we, we haven't really tested this properly um, because, I mean, there are other problems. But in principle, there is really no reason, right? I mean, the, 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 the set of RPMs is fixed and the installation order is fixed, so, so we expect predictable results. Uh, yeah, I think about it, like, post installation scripts with straight files, possibly with different timestamps, possibly even contents. And yes, we, ha we, have, we have to, yeah, so, so it's like a, it gets into the, uh, the, pro the same problems as building of RPMs reproducibly. You have to do some adjustments to, to, to fix timestamps and so on. Yes. Well, uh, maybe twice. And uh, so, uh, I'll, I'll get to this. This is a this is a valid problem, right? Um, so, I mean, what is the meter is bigger, <laughs> but it's not terrible. So, first of all. Uh, I don't I don't have like a, um, a I had I don't want to talk about specific numbers, but gen generally it turns out that you would expect that the like the inter D built with Dracut is so much smaller because it has a, a smaller set of files. But actually, that's not true. Like because um, almost everything now is delivered as a binary and some libraries. You uh, if you follow the the package uh, dependencies you get almost the exact same set of files because just you need the same libraries and most of the space is used by the libraries for code. So, you, so this, this, there is very little difference in this regard. Uh, then we have some stuff like um, the hardware database and I'm installing that because as part of the RPM, Jakut is not installing that, but I think it's a bug, bug in Jakut. So there was a like little differences. And then the big difference is the stuff that you said that well, what to do about kernel modules. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just installing the kernel modules core RPM that has all the modules. So that's uh, 30 megabytes or something like that. It, 
it's, it would be possible to, to modify this, right? It's, it's, I mean, I'm saying that I, we want to install everything from packages, but it's not like we, we cannot. Uh, I mean, we, we already removed some files that we don't want, and we can also remove maybe, I mean, if there's no other choice, we can figure out a, a mechanism to select a subset of modules. This is, this is doable. Hmm? Okay. Um, and another way to answer this is that, okay, so the init ID is, uh, let's say, uh, less than 100 megabytes. For a current machine, current machines, this is actually tiny, right? I mean, you can, you can have go binaries, there are multiple size of that. And why is that such a problem to have an init ID of this size? It's a problem because we load it at boot and decompress it and put it in memory. And there's an idea to uh, use init IDs that are not CPI are archives compressed, but they are, uh, for example, ERO FS with internal compression. So you get like a block device and only uncompress the stuff that you use. And then, so this needs some, some small kernel work. And then you sidestep the problem because you have an interd that is a gigabyte and you wouldn't really care. Uh, I mean, depending on how much memory you have. Uh, so, I mean, right, because copying of 100 megabytes in memory, it's a fraction of a second, right? It's the uncompression that is the, the problem. Uh, uh, yes, the kernel modules. Uh, and also, what works in the in, in the RDs that are built this way is that is the stuff that, that is directly supported by packages, right? So, so for, for example, LVM is not a problem, and normal installations with ButterFS are not a problem, and, uh, and encrypted disks are not a problem. But iSCSI is currently implemented in this way that, that there's some very complicated logic in Trackwood that does string matching and uh, builds the configuration of the fly from some other stuff. And I don't want to repeat that. I, I want to, to change the package so that it supports running in the interd natively and let the package managers or package authors deal with that and not to have special logic. Uh, okay, so uh, we, we, let, let's say that we, we built the image um, in destroy infrastructure and everybody gets the same image. This is, this is nice if it works, but uh, it will not work for everybody because people need to do some local uh, modifications. So, like the, 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 the side uh, step answer is to just build multiple interd, and we will certainly do that. So currently in Fedora we build a unified kernel image for virtual machines, not with MKS uh, interd, but with Jackwood. But it's a, uh, it has a, an interd that only supports booting in all types of cloud VMs. So it has enough kernel drivers and enough software to 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 work on virtualized hardware and not on other things. We, we, we could and probably would do a, a bunch of variants, but we also need other ways to uh, extend the, to, to provide local modifications, and there's a, a bunch of answers. And uh, over the last, well, year at least, in the system D project, a lot of work has been going into this functionality. So um, it is needed if you want to have uh, read-only signed images that you run, for example, in the cloud, but it, it also is the same problem for the interd because you want to have an interd that is signed and is read-only, and then you need to extend it. So, I want to talk about those those approaches. Uh, so, uh, credentials, uh, right? Um, we have we have a row of data. We, we start it somewhere. We um, uh, uh, we have multiple ways to, to store the credential, and uh, I talked about this uh, during my talk in the morning, so I'm, I'm skipping over this. Uh, but the, the important part for um, confidentiality is that we can encrypt this. So we encrypt the credential um, with, um, uh, what they have this here? We encrypt it with, uh, a file that is uh, stored on a, um, 
local disk that is protected with LUX, so it's, it's a secret. Uh, we, we also encrypt it using the TPM. Uh, I mean, the either this, either that, or both, and both is the, the, the best answer. And then we have a credential, which we can actually place in DSP, where it's public, so to speak, but uh, it is uh, secret because you cannot decrypt it, and also the encryption works as a, um, a authentication layer, but because if we decrypt something that, that was encrypted in a wrong way, I mean, with the wrong keys, then it doesn't, the, 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 the file it will not be accepted. So this is one way that we can have uh, stuff, lo local modifications. They're created on the running machine and then they play, they're placed in DSP. Uh, second uh, mechanism is configuration extensions and this is kind of a, a new concept, uh, but it's a, a variant of something that was there already before. So we have system extensions and configuration extensions, and they're kind of the same. So it's a discoverable disk image uh, that has a partial, uh, partial contents of the, of the file system uh, that systemd will load at runtime, over, use overlayFS to, to make it visible in the file system. And uh, system extensions are for code that is in slash user and slash opt and uh, configuration extensions are for slash etc. So you, you can make, you can drop those images, um, those extensions into the right places, for example, in DSP, and they will appear in the interd uh, once systemd is up. Uh, and um, uh, they, the discovery of dis ima disk images can contain DM Verity data and, and uh, uh, the DM Verity data is protected by a root hash, and this root hash can be signed and also embedded in the DDI. Uh, so, uh, systemd will tell the kernel to use the kernel keying to authenticate the, the contents of the uh, extensions before they're being used. Uh, yes, discover all these images. Uh, this is uh, right. So. Uh, systemd dissect uh, will tell us that, okay, the, the thing is an extension for, for system images, for interds, for portable services, depending on the metadata in the, uh, in the image. And um, uh, so here is an example. We have, th so this is a, a disk image and it has a user partition, uh, slash user partition and slash an ESP partition and Verity data as a separate partition and a, a signature for the Verity data. This is all separate partitions in the discoverable disk image. So GPT as a file system table. Uh, and we have yet another mechanism, uh, which is add-ons. So an add-on is a, a Yuki-like binary uh, that has a section, and the section has uh, kernel parameters. So, uh, I mean, this might sound crazy, and I think it's a bit crazy, but the reason is that because it's a, so it's a UKI, it means that it's a, a Microsoft PE binary. Uh, and this means that we can feed it to, uh, to Shim, and Shim will tell us using the secure boot infrastructure whether it has a valid signature. So. Uh, we are putting a text file inside of a binary that is signed by some key, and this way we can verify the whole thing. So, returning to this list from before, we have the variants, we have credentials, we have extensions that are checked by the kernel keying. So, this ultimately also means the secure boot infrastructure, and we have the add-ons. Uh, so, it's, I mean, different different options and. The addition of those options is what I think makes the, the whole project viable because uh, we, we will have ways to, to deal with the, uh, with, with just not having flexibility in the entirety itself. Uh, yes, so, uh, I mean, the stuff that I talked before was kind of like on the, uh, more on the system D side and on the uh, MKI side, in the entirety side, um, uh, 
there has been work done to, 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 uh, so, uh, to, to, to integrate with kernel install. So uh, kernel install um, uh, um, gained a, a few different plugins for different things related to UKIs and MQSI interd. So we have a kernel plugin to invoke MQSI interd to build an interd. When you do call kernel install, we have a, a, a plugin to, uh, and for some reason I forgot to, to list it here. Uh, you, we have a kernel plugin to call UKIFI to generate an image, and uh, UKIFI gains support for config files, so if you put the right config file in the right place, this operation will uh, create a signed image. Uh, and then we have a, a plugin to copy the unified kernel image into the right place on the boot partition after everything has been ready. And this stuff is opt-in, so, so you need to uh, specify some config, uh, very simple config in various places. Well, because it's kind of experimental and we don't want to break uh, systems yet. Um, and also boot CTL kernel identify uh, is, a, is a helper that will tell you what, what the kernel, what the type of the kernel is and kernel inspect will print details about unified kernel images and so on. Uh, so I'm, um, to, to, to wrap this up, um, I mean, in some ways, the not much has happened in the MQSI RD project uh, over the last few months because uh, there isn't really that much to do from the MQSI in the RD side. The, the work has been happening in other places. Uh, and uh, I think we are kind of getting closer to the, to the point where it becomes uh, useful for, for, for real users. Um, uh, in principle, for we have a change for Fedora 39 to make uh, MQSI interd interds available. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this will not happen, but maybe for Fedora 40. There's some, some uh, outlook how to uh, build such images uh, in Koji. Uh, Grab2 might get support for unified kernel images. Um, I mean, patches are out there, they are being reviewed. Uh, there has been progress on making kernel modules uh, easier to install. We don't need the whole, I mean, it's still a single package with a big set of modules, but at least it doesn't contain the kernel anymore. And this was done because uh, of the change of introduction of unified kernel images for cloud VMs. Uh, and I mentioned that MQSI works uh, unprivileged and uh, there has been some work on integration. Um, uh, and links, uh, and uh, well, questions, comments. So um, I was, I guess I, this is, so if we, so, so the interd is a CP, CPIO archive and actually we can uh, build it without any privileges. So the, 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 the stuff that I mentioned about running without privileges is when we build a DDI. So like, for example, a, a system extension would be a DDI and then we need a file system. The uh, interds actually don't have a file system and they, they are built unprivileged without any issue. Um, So, so, um, so, so the, the, um, the building of interdis locally 
using this mechanism, it's like it's supposed to be a temporary step, right? In the sense that, yes, we do it, and we also need it for development, and we also always need to do it for development, but for uh, uh, end users, we want to build the interdis once and deliver uh, deliver them as a package content. So basically, you have a uh, like like with the kernel package, you, you have an interd package, and it just you get the interd there. Uh, or you or even better, you get a you have a kernel package that has a unified kernel image with the interd already embedded. Uh, So I, I have to admit that I, that was my idea in the beginning, but maybe it's actually not that useful. Maybe we, we want to do, I mean, the, the fact that the, mo the modules have been split out from the uh, Linux binary, this is nice, because the, they are both big and we don't want the Linux binary at all. But you know, the selection of specific modules, it could be done this way, or it could be done using some filtering mechanism. Uh, I'm leaning towards the second option now, but either way. Um, yes? That would be one option, yes. So, uh, okay, I, I forgot to repeat the question. So the question was, if we have um, some uh, special hardware or file system, and we want to deliver the code to, load, to open up the file system in the interd as a system extension, how does it work? So the way that extensions work is that um, very early when systemd is booting, uh, it starts a, a service, the service locates any extensions that are present and, and signed properly, and they're, they're at some point just appear in the file system. So this happens in early boot. So if you have this extension, this extension would uh, essentially uh, be overlaid and then there would, uh, the code inside of it could be used at a later point during the boot to, to, to mount the root file system or the, the, the whatever storage. So there is a mechanism to, to match extensions to, to the running system or the, the, the image. Um, Okay, so, so the question was, if we have multiple kernel versions and how do we match extensions to the right kernel version? And the answer is that for each um, kernel, we have a specific place for extensions for this kernel. And we also have uh, other places for extensions for all kernels. So uh, there, is, there is a mechanism to do the matching. Uh, So the question was whether uh, the installer has to care about the installation of the kernel and whether it will be installed by uh, the RPM packages, yes?
I, I'm not sure. I'm essentially maybe copying a file a second time, so not a big issue, but. Uh, so uh, I'm out of time, so let me do a demo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me show the config for MKSI interd. Uh, sorry, MKSI conf. So uh, this is my config file, and it lists packages. And it says that the output is CPIO. And now we call MKSI. And since this is without, uh, I mean, a demo, I am doing it without network. Uh, oh, it failed because it exists already. So let me do it with minus F now. Uh, and we, we do the package installation. And we do a setup. And then we re remove some files so that the interd is smaller. Uh, here, this, those, those packages are only for installation, and then they get dropped. Uh, and we have an initrd somewhere here. It also comes with a manifest and a changelog so that we know what is inside, so like hashes of stuff. OK, thank you.